What's going on everybody? It's Jay Coffee Talk back again with another video for you guys. Make sure to tap in in the comments on this one. Definitely want to hear your guys' opinion. Hit the like, subscribe, notification bell, all that good stuff. So check it out, man. You know, it's no news. It's not anything new that Irv Gotti, Ja Rule, you know, 50 Cent, <laughs> that there's a, um, you know, a genuine hatred between between them, you know, uh, a beef that goes beyond a lot of these beefs that you see in hip hop and music and in the rap game. You know what I mean? It's it's personal. These dudes hate each other. And um, Irv recently, but before I get into that, I just want to say that I'm going to do a video, uh, maybe one, maybe a series of videos, you know, speaking on the whole uh, Murder Inc. verse G unit, Jive verse 50, beef, you know what I mean? And how that all the other artists and labels and, and crews and squads, whatever, that you know, that ended up incorporating, as we know, Shady Records got involved, Dre got involved, uh, Benzene, you know what I'm saying? All that. I'm gonna do a, a series or maybe just one video in long form detailing all that. But check it out what we're talking about today. If you guys haven't seen it, go check it out. Irv just did a, you know, um, some interview. Well, you know, how Vlad breaks his interviews up into different, you know, a few. He'll make four or five videos out of an interview. Well, Irv just was on there, and man, he went in on Fifty Cent. Like it, it was like he's just saying Fifty's a rat. I can't exactly prove it, but I'm telling y'all, he's a rat. And that's something we've heard of for a long time. You know what I mean? That's That narrative has been out there. Um, but, you know, before, before he even was really well known in the rap game, the Ghetto Koran song drew a lot of heat. A lot of people, you know, did not like a lot of the stuff that he was talking about in that song. And it was a different era, a different time back then. Not like nowadays how... You know, people will talk about things, you know, that happen, incidents and, you know, kind of get in more, de get in depth a little more on certain, you know, topics that back in the day wouldn't be discussed at all. And that was the era it was when Ghetto Koran came out. You know what I mean? But um, he basically was saying, you know, uh, going over. A lot of the stuff people already know, but I don't know. You gotta, you gotta watch that interview. Like he just went in on him, you know. And he, he just says like the way this dude is, he's just so fraudulent that you know the way he is a bully, you know the way how he acts through through Instagram and everything, trolling people, and how he's so petty and likes to clown around. And you know, if you go back to when Fifty first came in the game. You know, when he had that whole image of getting shot nine times and, you know, being the most thorough dude around, did it three to nine and all that. Like, look at the way he acts now. And it just doesn't add up that this isn't the same guy. And, you know, he basically was talking to how a lot of that stuff is fabricated. Like with the three to nine, he was always so, you know, wanted to rep that that he did that three to nine so hard and he really went to shot camp like technically he did a three to nine but you know he sat in the county he went to reception you know went upstate went to reception and then went and did six months and shot came home and never violated parole so yeah he did do a three to nine but you know not necessarily and i'm not trying to hate i'm just kind of trying to spin to y'all what irv was saying basically that why does he always have to make it sound you know, go so hard on his image because 50 was, you know, trying to be the guy that just he was he was too tough for the rap game. You know what I mean? That having an image and pushing an image was corny. You know what I mean? Like he basically was saying he fooled all you guys. Look at him now. So some other things that he talked about, too, was the whole thing with Jimmy Henchman, as you know, him and Fifth had be for a while and there was a document that came out that showed you know 50 cent had contacted the feds and you know w was speaking to them about jimmy henchman and everything and that document has since you know it's been stated that it's fake but it's like you can't really when you fact check it you can't really find out who is saying it's fake you know what i mean that it's a 
a legitimate source that that is you know debunking that document so it just kind of makes you think you know and um also with the shooting uh you know word is that 50 cent lied that it wasn't he wasn't shot nine times that it was only like four or five or something like that and um something that he also said about the shooting was if you notice where do you get shot like in the mouth you know what i mean that it was like a symbolic thing like irv you gotta go watch this interview he went in on 50 tapping in the comments on all the stuff that i'm talking about y'all um, definitely you know that's what this channel's all about want to hear what you guys think but you know he's he's very you know they already had beef but what irv is so bitter about beyond their initial beef is as you know when he uh murder Inc. caught that fed case and they ended up beating the fed case he feels that at the time the stuff that 50 cent was doing on record you know beefing with them and some of the things that he was saying he considers it like dry snitching like he that he put the feds on them because you know that's a whole uh video or podcast i could do talking about murder Inc.'s fed case but you know um the, the the short end of it is basically that they uh you know owed the uh, owed the irs money and you know that it was um cleaning money and that kenneth supreme mcgriff who 50 you know uh, there's rumors out there that he might have had something to do with 50 shooting and you know uh supreme's doing life in the feds now and basically he kept mentioning him and they the feds try to say that he really owned Murder Inc. You know what I mean? That he was the silent owner and the business side of Murder Inc. through the music was covering and cleaning the dirty money. What what McGriff, uh, was, uh, what Supreme was doing in the streets. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just one take in this video. It's the fourth. I got things to do. So I'm just kind of, you know, uh, not edit editing this video at all. I'm just giving it to y'all straight. That's normally how I do it, but sometimes I might edit a couple parts here and there. But anyways, um, you know, and he's saying that 50 kept mentioning them on, on you know, music. And we know the hip-hop police and the feds do listen to, to music and do pay attention to what's going on in, in the hip-hop world. You know what I'm saying? But, um... Another thing that he talked about, too, or that I wanted to bring up is when I was saying that document with uh, the Jimmy Henchman thing, how they were saying that's fake. If you remember when Murder, Inc. first, you know, uh, when 50 Cent was first coming out, you know, signed the Shady Records when Get Rich or Die Trying was, was about to drop. And they were on that promo run for 50 Cent, which they did an excellent job. You know, they, that you knew that record was going to go crazy platinum. Um, but anyways, um, that order of protection that uh, Murder, Inc., Ja Rule, and Irv Gotti exposed that, fit, that you know, um, was against Irv and Murder, Inc. I forget exactly who it specifically was against. Um, you know, 50 Cent was one of the people named on it. 50 Cent went on and on about how that document was fake. But in the end, it turned out to be a real order of protection. Now, we don't know if 50 actually asked for it. You know, um, it, wrote, it came from the incident where 50 was stabbed at the hit factory. But word basically is that it was an engineer that was there with 50 Cent. And Yayo is the one who, you know, um, went hard pressing charges and everything like that because he wanted to get a lawsuit. There's a lot of, you know, different interviews that you can go and, and watch about that. But um, it's just crazy, man. Um what some of the things that Irv Gotti was saying really makes you think, you know, it almost seems like 50 Cent is untouchable that anyone who goes against him always seems to go down. You know what I mean? Like, think about it for real. You know, and as you know, with Jimmy Henchman, um, one of the things Irv spoke about, too, was how they mess with the man's son. You know what I'm saying? They, uh, slapped his son originally they thought it was yayo then you know Lodi mac was the one that took responsibility for it and you know Lodi mac ended up being killed and you know that's that's one of fifth's enemies that is gone you know in the feds and then as i spoke about supreme he's gone in the feds you know which 
the feds, you know, probably were looking at Supreme already, you know, wanted to, to put him up under the jail. But that's kind of what Irv is saying. Just look at the way things happen with this guy. You know what I mean? Like people end up on the feds radar when they end up on 50 cents radar. And, um, you know, he, that's kind of what he was saying, too, is basically there. Do, I mean, that there isn't always paperwork when it comes to informants, you know, that sometimes that stuff is like classified and people can't see it. So, I mean, you know, it's kind of a, a tough claim to to, you know, say if it's official or not. But, um, you know, he he's he says, you know, if you go back and look to when 50 was shot and, you know, he was probably approached by the feds and by, you know, uh, the, you know, uh, new NYPD or whatever. But that, um, you know, if you go back to and go over a timeline from then on, that it would almost appear as if 50 Cent became an informant at that point. But I don't know, y'all just wanted to see what you guys think about it. Everyone tapping in the comments, as you know, as I said, this is just kind of more of like a what do y'all think type piece. Just presenting this to you guys. Um, go check that interview out. As I said, Irv went in on 50. You could just feel the hatred between them. And when Ja Rule was on Drink Champs, um, you know, uh, what, like six months ago or so, Fat Joe, or I believe it was when Fat Joe was on there, he mentioned how he tried to, you know, get Fifth and Ja to squash it and come out on stage together with him and do a show. And Ja was just like, that'll never happen. And that Irv, like when uh, Fat Joe had called Irv, Irv started tripping on him, cussing him out. Like these dudes just, there, there is no squashing this beef ever. You know what I'm saying? But um, Irv also went as far as to say maybe 50 Cent was saved by the devil for everyone out there, you know, who looks at things on a spiritual level that He's like, this dude, the way he acts is like the devil. You know what I'm saying? He's so hateful, uh, jealous. Jealousy is something, you know, we've seen within the G-Unit camp. It's almost like he never wanted none of these dudes to get bigger than him. Or, you know, if anyone is ever doing good in the, in the rap game, it's like 50 majority of the time will try to, you know, take shots at them and everything. That The way he just gets on a smear campaign with everyone. He's just like, this dude's a cancer. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know, y'all. Get in the comments. Let me know what you think. As I said, I'm going to do a video about, you know, the murder rank versus G-Unit beef and, you know, everything that it encompassed. As I said, everyone else who got involved in it, either directly or indirectly. And um, that's all I really got, guys. Take a moment, hit the like and subscribe and the notification bell. And as I've been telling everyone, I'm going to have a lot more sports content coming, especially when NFL season hits and when we get, you know, when camp's going on and everything, when we're getting closer to the NFL season. So a lot to come from this channel. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. Hope you guys enjoy the fourth. If you don't celebrate the fourth, you know, I just hope you guys have a great day. And um, that's what it is. Jay Coffee Talk. I'm out of here. Peace.